Hi guys, uh, here I am with a bunch of quickies. Uh, I just wanted to list up all the gotchas I've been running into over and over, even after using Moho for years, because you just forget about them, especially if you're not permanently animating like me. I often have a, a hiatus of, of, of half a year a year where I don't even touch Moho. You get back into it and you forget about all these intricate little gotchas. I'm going to list up my biggest gotchas, not only for you, but also for me. So next time I, I use this software, I can look at the video and make sure I don't screw it up this time around. Number one, parenting bones. This is one of the biggest gotchas that you often get wrong and forget about it because it's not always visible. So when I am creating bones, a chain of bones, they're all parented to each other. That means I create one bone and every next bone I create is a child bone of the previous bone, regardless of where I put it. You can't see this in here right now. That's why you forget about it very often. You just keep on adding bones and everything seems nice and suddenly they move in a really weird way and it's like, oh, wait a second, I forgot. So you just hit P, the P um, key on your keyboard and then you can see the relationship of those bones. Um, and you can see this one's a child of this, this one's a child of this. So it's all like that. So if you want to have, say, a main bone and attach to the several bones, you'd have to, with a keyboard, so switch back and forth between, um, B, I usually B and A. So B is to select bones and A is to add bones. So I'd select this bone, hit A, say add a bone, B, select this bone, A, add a bone, B, select this bone, A, add a bone, B, select this bone, A, add a bone. Now, if I hit P, you can see they're all parented to this main bone. So you have to have a bit of conscious going on there to make sure that works well. Um, because otherwise, you know, as you can see, when I, you know, this is all the bone strings a bit weird, but when, when, when I basically move this bone, uh, one is not moving because he's parented to nothing. I forgot to select the other bone. So this baby here is parented to nothing and that's why he's not moving with the others. To reparent it, uh, I can think you know, you just have to have the bone selected. Yeah, hit P and then you click on whatever bone should be the parent and ta-da, it's gonna move with it, okay? So this is the trick with the parenting of the bones, but be careful because if you reparent bones after you've done smart actions, it can actually really mess up the smart actions big time. You might have to go in and, and, and re animate them and it's 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 a huge headache so before you start any smart action double check your bones make sure they're all parented properly another one here is also the bone strengths if your bone is supposed to um, deform any kind of layer or points uh, through flexi binding it should have a strength otherwise make it strength zero if you're just going to uh, point bind a few points to that bone you don't need strength make it zero otherwise it can really mess with you and especially if you have bones that are used for for uh, for widgets actually not for actual character deforming but widgeting stuff they all have to be zero just totally make sure once you're done double check uh, do all the bones that that need strength have strength and do all the bones that are just got levers to to uh, to do other things have zero strength super important big gotcha <laughs> need to look at the angle of these bones. Very often you intend to put a bone at a zero angle somewhere here and it actually is 360 degrees. And again, this can mess up things later afterwards. Uh, just want to make sure that if, 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 this, if one of your bones is supposed to point up here, uh, double check, hit shift to, to, have a, to restrict the angles. That's one thing to make sure you don't have some 0 0.001 degree. That's another thing you want to avoid. So always make sure you hit shift when, when, you, when you turn the bones in and first set, put them in place and then make sure it is actually zero degrees and not, sometimes it's 360, you know, which is the same visually. You'd think it's, what's the difference, right? 360, I'm gonna put in zero. It's no difference visually, but it can really screw up things, okay? <music> 
after you rigged your, your character, you want to go into a layer while looking at the bones and to, to, to do some tweaking, right? So let's say I want to I do some tweaking on the vectors of this leg. And uh, here are the bones. So I go here. Here's my, my um, I think I can do this, right? Here's the leg B layer with a thigh, sock, shin, foot, foot B. I go in here and what? All my bones are gone. Why can't I see my bones? You go to the other leg, bones are visible. What? magic what weird witchcraft is going on here go to this bone again it's all gone can't see the bones what's broken there's a bug it's not a bug actually what happened is and that happens quite a, a bit you inadvertently or accidentally have uh, attached the whole folder you have bound it through layer binding i mean generally i say don't use layer binding unless you absolutely have to because it screws up a lot of things and this is not really helpful most of the time so um, the w easiest thing way to, to fix this is to just uh, unlayer bind that. Then you can go and you can see still the bones and then bind every sub. You don't want to bind the folder anyway most of the time unless it's a switch layer with a mouse. Maybe that one you can do layer binding. Otherwise, you rather go in and have all the layers in the subfolder flexi bound to whatever bone you want to bind it to. See, I'm layer binding again. Nasty boy. Um, so you would bind this one, Command Shift F, flexi bound to this bone, and you would go on sock. That's this one. I want to bind this here. And I'm really stupid right now because I'm in the wrong leg. <laughs> See, this is kind of stuff that happens all the time. Now, of course, this one, this one would be, of course, this one. Otherwise, it would be completely idiotic. And foot B is bound already fine. So anyway. Um, Layer binding is work of the devil. You don't want to do it unless uh, sometimes for hands, if the hands are completely on top of the arm and in, in, in separate from it. If you have hands like with her, where you need to attach maybe the end points here of the hand to the arm, you don't want to do layer binding either. You'd have to go into every single hand of the hand switch layer and flexi bind it to the hand bone and then point bind the edges to the arm bone so that when you wiggle the hand it still stays nicely attached to the uh, bone um, although uh, what i've been starting to do lately because it seems to be a bit more flexible but it really depends on on your character this one actually is not doing that it's actually just fixed and as you can see you have this wrist here which as you can see in some cases looks weird but then you can go in if you animate her, for example, um, you can you could, you could go say if you have an angle. I mean, you don't have an angle like this. If you have an angle like this, say this is still an angle that could possibly, if you go very you know tight angle, and it looks a bit weird because it pops out here. You just go in a bit and, and actually move it up a bit, so it looks good. That's what you do um, for that particular case, and it looks okay. Um, that's that. Another gotcha. As I said, bone strength is another thing. Let's make the bone strength of this of this lower arm zero, okay? Uh, see, this is what happens basically. Um, somehow the bone strength is zero, and so all the leftover points that were flexi bound to this layer are now unbound entirely and stay in place. And things screw up big time, and you think, oh my god, what happened here? It's not as bad as you think it is. You just go back to the other layer, you go bone strength, you usually make it about, about as wide as the object. It's, it, it just needs to cover the object it's supposed to deform. And then you can go back in and oh, everything works again. Fine, no problem. Um, generally, always double check on bone strength. You have your head turn here, okay. And what sometimes happens where while you've been going back and forth and back and forth, you fix to check your head turn, you might have touched another bone. You know, I don't know. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be a small thing, you know. Um, something not really important or really big, you know. And you never notice it because you've been looking up here, you know. You've been looking up here. And did your head turns, head turns, everything's fine, great. You go out of this thing. And lo and behold, next time you want to do your... You see, this one has strength. Should be strength zero anyway. Hello. And the next time you do your you do your head turn, weird things happen. You're like, what what's going on here? Or what the hell is this? You know. And first thing you want to do, check in your animation. Um, and you can see already um, all the 
bones that are affected by this smart action are actually highlighted in bold. So you see, oh, wait a second. There's like one, two, three, four bones that are somehow um, influenced by this. So you want to highlight, you want to want to select this bone. And then you can see, I mean, in, in this red timeline here, this, this is all the movement, this bone. So just, just delete it, got rid of it. It's not supposed to be animated. This one, oh yeah, there's some action going on here. Delete this. The hand, delete it. The lower arm, delete it. And boom, now double check. Okay, no other bone is highlighted. We're good. You can go out of here, you can go back, and do your head, do your head turn and everything's fine. Great. <laughs> Now the final error, which I have shown you time and time again, the best way to screw up your stuff is to do rigging on frame zero and frame one, which you very often forget that you're on frame one because that's one of the problems, probably is unavoidable. Some of the rigging that you do on frame zero, that's why you always should do your rigging and your, your point binding and, 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 and bone and whatever, bone strengthening. <laughs> um, to test it, you often have to go to frame one to test whether it actually works. And then you forget to go back to frame zero and you do the wildest rigging and stuff on frame one and it's all wasted and it's all a mess and you have to do it again because it's really hard to get any of this stuff over into frame zero. So generally always make sure you're on frame zero when you do any kind of rigging. Uh, Moho does this highlight thing here. You see the red frame. So when I'm on frame one, the red frame is gone. And when I'm rigging, when I'm on frame zero, I'm on the, the red frame is here. But I don't know, maybe I've just gotten used to it. I overlook it all the time. And so I find myself doing rigging for an hour or two. I'm on frame one and I'm like, damn it, just lost an hour of work, basically. But there are some ways to copy and paste some of the animations you've done into frame zero, but it's it's still extra work and it's it's a pain in the ass. These are my main gotchas for, for Moho. Let me know in the comments what are your gotchas. What is the stuff that you have run into that has screwed you up big time in Moho that you want to tell others to avoid? Talk to you again soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and until next time.